Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb, and a special welcome to all my statistics majors that are out there. So I'm an economics major, so we take a lot of similar courses in our undergrad study. And in this video, I wanted to go over the top 10 highest paying jobs for stats majors. Now, statistics is an amazing major, especially for the future job market. It prepares you a lot for a lot of great jobs that are gonna be needed in the near future in the world at large. So without any further ado, let's get into it. These are the top 10 I'm gonna go from lowest paying to highest paying number one will be the highest paying but I highly encourage you not to skip to that number one for two reasons the first one is salary isn't the most important thing and secondly somewhere along the way you may find something that piques your interest and that you want to look a little bit more into so I highly recommend sticking out throughout the video and seeing if something interests you in particular but without any further ado let's get into it let's start talking about the top 10 highest paying jobs for stats majors and if you're new here, my name is Calvin Rabb. I make videos all about personal finance and the job market. So if you're interested in anything like that, I would love it if you would subscribe. Coming at number 10 is a logistician making over $74,000 base average salary per year. Now, these salaries are base average salary, meaning this is before any bonuses or incentives. And of course, this is gonna change from company to company and especially location to location. So take it as a ballpark, not a all encompassing salary that you're guaranteed. So a logistician, what you're gonna be doing here is you are in charge of a company's particular supply chain. Now, supply chain, is an overarching term of how products go from a supplier eventually to the customer's hands and so it's in charge of getting the products storing the products putting them in store and eventually making sure that they get in the customer's hands in the most efficient way possible so this is going to involve a lot of numbers and a lot of statistics you have to figure out which orders you should order from you know which wholesalers should you get the products from what's the most cost effective way to get them into your warehouses how should you store your warehouses what's the best way to get them from the warehouses eventually Eventually to stores or to get them out to the customers that are maybe buying online so there's a lot of stats a lot of analytics and logisticians are in charge of that whole domain so if this is something that you're interested in if you really like supply chain and just seeing business from this level then this may be something that you want to look into Coming in at number nine, making under $76,000 per year is an investment analyst. Now, this person's gonna be working for a company and deciding how they should invest their money. So companies, a lot like people, do invest their money. They don't want their money just sitting there in a bank account because they understand with inflation, they're actually losing money. So these investment analysts will look at different investments and try to decide what the best course of action is. Now. Here, there was a lot of data. You know, oftentimes maybe they're just trying to buy some stocks or bonds or different things like that. So you're gonna look at the fundamentals and maybe do a little bit of technical analysis and take all that data and share that. You know, you have to understand what the company's goals are and have to be able to project, all right, this is probably what you can expect back every single year as far as a return. You know, maybe they have some type of interest yield that they're gonna give you or anything like that. So there's a lot of look into that. That's kind of the financial stock market side there's lots of a lot of other assets as far as real estate should this company be investing in buying their own buildings or maybe uh, buying their own warehouse rather than leasing it out or renting it out or something like that so as far as investments you are in charge of the company's investments and in growing this company's money of course you can be working for a company here there are also investment analysts in kind of investment related jobs or investment related companies like a hedge funds or something like that of course they're gonna have investment analysts as well so you can work in a whole different uh, kind of field if you like whether it be investments or really any big company that you can think of any company really at large needs some type of investment analyst or someone to make their investment decisions Coming in at number eight is a research analyst making over $85,000 base average salary per year. So this is a stock related position or an investment related position in that you're gonna be really researching a lot of stocks and different things like that. And I always enjoy reading a lot of research analysts work. Oftentimes if you go to Yahoo Finance, you can kind of find who the big dogs are, or big dog research analysts, and they'll kind of lay out their thoughts on a particular stock. And I really enjoy 
enjoy reading through that and kind of seeing, you know, what changes from research analyst to research analyst. So what you're going to be doing here is you're going to look at a stock and you are going to look at the company's fundamentals. How much money are they making? What are they losing? What are their future projections? What is their R&D? How much money do they have? Are they innovating? How are they in relation to their competitors? And what is the future projections of them? And you're going to kind of usually release a statement. Maybe it's to the general public if that's kind of the company that you're working for or it's for a company in specific you're a research analyst for this company and you're gonna say you know is this a buy is it a sell or should you hold this stock for a while and really just getting a whole bunch of data here you know this is so much more than just looking at a few numbers you know there's oftentimes when you're making research decisions especially for big companies there is a lot of money on the line trust me and here you are able to research those companies and if this is something you enjoy you enjoy that stock market I really love researching different companies seeing what the future projections are and different things like that. So if that's something that you love, maybe this is something that you want to look into. Coming in at number seven is a financial analyst making over $85,000 per year. So a financial analyst is one of the more common positions. Everyone kind of knows or at least knows that a company needs some type of a financial analyst. And what you're going to be doing here is you are in charge of making sense of the finances of a company. So oftentimes you will look at the finances of a company, you know, how much cash do you have on hand? How much are you losing to cogs and different things like that? And seeing, you know, what is the cash? cash flow and really making decisions off of that. Although at its surface, this may seem somewhat simple. I've worked at a couple internships and the financial analysts do some amazing, extremely complex things. But the beauty of it all is in the end, when they're describing it, oftentimes then it's very similar. So here, if you are a big person that is into finances, enjoy looking at and making different budgets and cash flow statements and different things like that, then this is something that you should look into. A lot of this is done in Excel, although a lot of it is also kind of migrating into different kind of accounting systems. You will also have to know a decent amount about accounting for this position as well. And also there's a lot of programming sometimes involved here. And that's kind of where I see financial analysts, the job heading altogether. But if this is something that you're interested in, it is a high paying job and really every company kind of needs some type of financial analyst. Coming in at number six is an actuary who's going to be making over $91,000 per year base average salary. So an actuary is interesting. It actually deals with a lot of statistics. So what uh, actuary does is they are in charge of the statistics of risk. They are trying to see, you know, what are the chances that this happens? And if this happens, what is the kind of financial fallout of it? How much money could be lost if this happens? So from that description, you can probably see that actuaries, usually work for insurance companies because insurance are in the business of risk. You know, they are insuring on different things that could happen and they want to have their prices such that they're making money, but then also competitive to other insurance companies as well. And you can see that, you know, insurance company has to be right with those numbers because if they're wrong, they could lose a lot of money. You know, if the projections are wrong and something happens abnormally the, and it happens a lot more, costs them a lot more, then that is something that it could really hurt the insurance company. So if you're big into statistics and if you're a stats major, I'm assuming you at least enjoy it a little bit. So you're going to be looking at a lot of stats here. And this is a very much to statistical related position. Coming at number five is a software engineer who's going to be making just over $92,000 per year. So a software engineer, what you're going to be doing here at a very high level is combining knowledge of engineering and programming and fusing them together to make, you know, helpful software products and applications for consumers or businesses. Now, this is a huge field. I'm someone who is into programming, really enjoys it as an industry and studying it from that perspective. And this is huge. You know, there's so much more that I could go into. This does fall under more of a computer science position. And, and there is a lot more that you'd have, probably have to know here that you may not learn in your stats classes, a lot of computer programming that of course you could self teach yourself as well, but it will involve a lot of math and a lot of your stats knowledge may help. And oftentimes in stats, at least the stats classes that I've had, it is helpful if you do know some programming. A little bit of Python was helpful in my uh, advanced econ class along with a little bit of R and different things like that. So I'm assuming you've done some programming in your stats, although if not, it's fine. You can still become a software engineer and there is a whole bunch of great videos and YouTubers that I watch that involve different programming channels and different things like that if this is something that you really want to take seriously.
Coming at number four, making over $99,000 per year is a computational scientist. Now, a computational scientist here is gonna be in charge of creating very, very complex mathematical models that usually solve some type of scientific problem. So usually, these mathematical models are going to replicate or represent the natural world in some way, because as I said, this is gonna to have to do with something scientific related. So you're gonna be creating these complex mathematical models and usually, these are so complex, require such a powerful computer that it's usually run on supercomputers and different things like that. And there's a bunch of different fields that usually you'll go into here. There's things like computational biology or even computational finance and different things like that. So if this is something that you're involved in, if you really enjoy math and writing a lot or just creating a lot of complex mathematical equations, then this may be something that you want to look into. Coming at number three is a quantitative analyst making just under $107,000 per year. So quantitative analyst is the title, although for the most part in common vernacular, it's usually just said quant. If someone is a quant, this is what they'll do. So a quant or quantitative analyst, what they're gonna be doing here is you are specializing in mathematical and statistical models in order to really look at financial risk and a lot of investments and different things like that. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be implementing a lot of very complex models used by firms in order to make a lot of financial and business decisions because there is a lot of data that is involved with all this and you're gonna be breaking it down and really creating those mathematical models that are gonna be used so that the company can make decisions. Now this is a very fascinating field and I looked into this for a little while. I thought this may be something that I was interested in and I still am interested in it. And there are some brilliant people within this field. So if this is something that you're looking into it is also an expanding field as well and it is very high paying at the same time Coming in at number two is a data scientist who's gonna be making just over $113,000 a year base average salary. So a data scientist is in charge of, you guessed it, all things data. So we live in a data-driven world where companies have an absurd and unimaginable amount of data. And a data scientist's job is to go in there and make sense of it. And they do this in such a way that they are kind of combining software engineering and data science. Data science is a field within itself to make sense sense of all this data. So data in its rawest form can make absolutely no sense. So you then run it through different programming frameworks that you're familiar with and statistical models to make sense of it. And what's so cool about data scientists is they take what is unbelievably complex and make it simple in order to describe it to management, to other people in the company, and just allow them to make decisions off of that. Because you can collect all this data, but if you can't interpret it and make sense of it, there's no point in collecting it. So what you're gonna be doing here is interpreting all that data. This is an amazing field, an important one, because it allows you to make these decisions. So if this is something that you're interested in, it is important and it is very high paying, and there is a lot of stuff on data science. I'm very familiar with, I take a lot of courses on Udemy. Of course, they're not, not sponsoring this channel or anything like that, I just like them. Although that would be cool if they did sponsor the channel. But it's, you can go and take a lot of, I bought a data scientist course that I've just started and so far it seems really cool. So if this is something that you're interested in, there's a lot of resources out there for you. Coming in at number one is a machine learning engineer who's gonna be making just over $114,000 base average salary. Now, this is a fascinating, almost futuristic job within itself. And what you're doing here is kind of in the name, but you're gonna be developing, creating, and designing machine learning and deep learning systems. Now, that may seem somewhat strange at first, but machine learning, very simplistically what it is, is it is the process or kind of the study of machines learning by themselves and learning through experience. You know, that is how not only do we learn, or one way that we learn, but also machines can learn by looking at the past. You know, you don't always have to tell machines what to do, but can you create an algorithm that goes through different events, can look back at the past and make future decisions based on what it's learned? And this is a huge field. It also kind of goes in line with a lot of artificial intelligence and a lot of research out there that is done there. And the reason that this is so high paying now is 
deep learning and machine learning is really seen as the future. You know, we always talk about the future of AI, the future of automation, and machine learning plays a very big role in that. And everyone's kind of asking, you know, what is the future of machine learning? Is it really going to take over the world? And because people think it's going to be such a big deal and it is so powerful currently, it is such a high paying position. So if you want a position that you are set for the future market, you know, creating these machine learning just algorithms and machines that of course are going to dominate the future then this may be an interesting that like just field that you want to step into you know this is something that i've done some research on you know i've been trying to get better at my python programming lately and i've been watching a lot of python programming machine learning related videos and courses uh, just because i think it's important to understand what is going on right now in order to prepare for the future job market so that got a little long-winded there. Of course, number one is just machine learning engineer, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this videos know a whole lot more than I do about this topic. You know, I'm just kind of scratching the surface, but it's a fascinating field to go into, and kudos to anyone that goes out there. And if you have any more further comments, questions, just want to talk about it, let me know in the comments below. So that will wrap it up. Those are the top 10 highest paying jobs that I see out there for stats majors. Now, there are a whole lot more. I have a lot of friends that are stats majors that are going in some pretty cool directions. So I want to know, did I miss anything? You know, was there a big job that I may have missed, a field that I would have missed, or did I get one of these wrong? Anything you have to say, let me know in the comments below. I love talking about this and it's an important conversation to have. So let me know in the comments below. I always look forward to talking to you guys down there, but for the most part, that will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm gonna to move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you are gonna see my most recent video. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you are gonna see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb, and I'll see you soon.